Hi there. In this video series, we've been covering four distinct goals that you can set for your affiliate program. Now we'll turn next to the goal of using Refersion to help increase your revenue. It kind of goes without saying, but increasing revenue is always a goal. For every single affiliate program, there is not a single merchant using Refersion whose goal in one way, shape, or form isn't to make more money. However, whether or not increasing revenue is the main goal of your program really depends on what stage your business is in. Even if it's not the main goal, then the idea of looking at the trend analysis of your revenue can still work even if it's starting at a low point. Even if it stays at a low point, you still want to see positive trends. If revenue is the goal of your program right now, then you probably need to be a more mature or larger program or a larger company. When we focus on objective numbers, it's really hard to set meaningful goals if your company is brand new. Say your goal is to make a million dollars this year. Without having the data to understand how in the world you're going to get there, it's unlikely to have a goal that's going to be achievable in a way that you can really plan for. Even with the small programs, if revenue is a goal, not just the main goal, you can always identify and reward your top performers and create incentives for them. You should also ask yourself, how are they achieving their success for you? Are you finding that for your particular product, all of your top performers are YouTubers? Well, you probably want to ask yourself, how can I identify and target other YouTubers? Maybe you have other people already in your program who have similar profiles that you should focus on targeting. Maybe you can use one of our partners to identify that kind of group and reach out to those people if they're brand new to you. Understanding who's performing and what they're doing can help you understand who you could use to help build on that further. As for our more mature and larger programs, publishers and large influencers increasingly can become a useful resource. That's not to say a brand new company couldn't become viral and get picked up by a large influencer. But realistically, larger influencers and publishers tend to want to work with people who, frankly, are already successful to some degree. Being cognizant of where you stand should drive these decisions. When you're targeting publishers and large influencers, the idea of cold mass emails and broader tactics that can work very successfully for finding influencers in your brand awareness and exposure type of goal stages are not as effective here. This is where you really need to have one-on-one -on -one reach outs and personalize your approach. If you're targeting someone who might get tens or even hundreds of cold inquiries a day, then you need to stand out. If you're sending just another cookie cutter canned email or you're sending the same email to 100 people and all of them are busy, all of them are making their livings as influencers, then they're gonna ignore you. So you have to make sure you're cultivating that correctly. Tie it into their framing. How are you relevant to them? Do you share a cause or story? Do you share a product love? Or is there something about your products that ties into how they frame themselves and what they love? This takes time and energy and research and there's no way around it. So it might not be the right thing to do when you're brand new and you don't have enough bandwidth. If you're brand new, then you probably want to stay away from some of the larger influencers where you might just get lost in the crowd. But the bigger of a team you have, then the more you might be able to follow this route. Product seeding could also come into play, which is just a fancy term for giving people free product. A lot of small companies do that. Of course, you don't want to necessarily send out a bunch of free product to a bunch of people. You want to make sure it's targeted, that it makes sense for your budget, that it makes sense for your margins, and that you're sending the right product to the right people. Do enough research to understand who gets what, who makes sense for what. You might find that for some of these larger publishers or influencers, you need to go through an agency. There are a lot of agencies out there that specialize in influencer relationships and management. And depending on who you want to work with and what you want to do, it might make sense for you to go through some of these agencies. Just keep in mind that you'll need a budget to utilize these resources. If your goal is increasing revenue, then you need to start looking pretty hard at your sales numbers. You need to understand your top line revenue, your average order value, and your trend analysis. You need to understand clearly where you are now and what you need to do to achieve your goal. You need to let the numbers drive your strategy. It's a little easier to see this in some example numbers on this slide. In this chart, which was pulled using real merchant data, we're seeing a merchant's monthly number of conversions, revenue, and average order value. We're also seeing a month-over-month -month trend analysis. Based on these numbers, this client is having a pretty successful program. More importantly, there's enough data there that you can start to draw conclusions. Let's presume that the linear growth that they had over 2022 will continue into 2023. We can see that if all trends continue on that same pattern, they'd have approximately 5.7 million in affiliate revenue. That's about 75,000 conversions with an AOV of a little under $77.
if you do that on a monthly basis, it's about 6,200 conversions a month. Now, perhaps they're looking at that and saying, okay, well, that's where we're headed, but where do we want to be? And that's the question you need to ask if revenue is your goal, and then work backwards. In their case, say they want to make $6 million in 2023. Well, based on those same linear projections, they need to have an extra $210,000 for the year. Based on their AOV, that's about 2,700 more conversions, approximately 226 a month. So if the goal is revenue and the goal is, I want to increase by X amount, what the numbers allow you to do is understand what that really means. In this case, it means 226 extra conversions a month. That's a concrete number that can be measured and tracked. It's not just, I want to make more money. Anytime you're looking at revenue goals, you have to make it crystal clear how you're going to get there. So now you know you have to make 226 extra conversions a month. The next question is, how are you going to get there? Most of our merchants find that AOV tends to be relatively static. That said, maybe there are some tactics you could address. Promotions. You could have affiliate-focused upsells. Some of our reversion partners focus just on this idea. Rebuy, one-click upsell. They can help do those upsells, maybe that are affiliate-based, that could help drive general AOV and, more importantly, your affiliate-based AOV. If you're trying to get 226 extra conversions a month, again, you can talk about targeting your top performers. Maybe you have 10 top performers. Can you get them an extra 25 sales a month? Maybe, maybe not, because it's important to look at the trends of those individuals too. Oftentimes, people hit a plateau, and maybe that plateau is really high, but it might not be realistic to expect your top affiliates to grow their traffic any further because they are what they are. That said, it's worth looking into. Maybe try giving them additional content. Can you give them swag? Can you give them special deals? Are there things that might be able to further incentivize them to help you meet your goal? Nano and micro-influencer programs can be a great way to help achieve revenue goals as well. Let's say again, we have 226 conversions a month that we're trying to get. If we get 220 influencers to have one more sale a month, then we can hit our goal. That might be a lot easier than trying to have 10 people do 25 extra sales a month. Regardless of our goal, some affiliates are going to fail to hit it. But the more you can spread that onus, the more you can hedge your bets against one particular person and avoid the all too common scenario where you might have a good program, but it's really dependent on just one person. And if that one person suddenly decides to move on to something else, then you could be in trouble. Diversifying can always be a good idea. And that's one of the reasons why nano and micro influencer programs are such a popular and often successful methodology. But again, make sure you're engaging with your affiliates in the first place. Focus on having them try to drive small improvements on an individual basis because you're looking at that cumulative goal. Another option is you can always try to find more affiliates. If you're trying to get 226 more conversions a month and you get one big influencer, then there's a chance you can easily blow that goal out of the water. It's often easier said than done. Now, of course, all of this planning is contingent on linear trends. And after a month or two, if you look at the numbers and see there was a big drop, or maybe your trend is exploding, then you should be ready to adjust your plan.